Namaste, everybody. How are you? Welcome back to my class. Hope all of you are well. Namaste. Let us start the class. So first we are going to chant all the prayers we have learned so far. So let us chant the prayers to Lord Ganesha. You chant with me. Oh, Ganesha, Ayya Namaha, Vakratunda Mahakaya, Surya Koti Samaprabha, Nirvignam Kuru Me Deva, Sarva Karyeshu, Sarvada Shuklam Baradharam Vishnum Shashivarnam Chatur Bhujam Prasanna Vadanam Dhyaye Sarva Vigno Pashantaye And now a prayer to Devi Saraswati, Goddess of Knowledge. Saraswati Namastubhyam Varade Kama Rupani Vidyarambham Karishyami Siddhir Bhavatu Me Sada And now a prayer to Lord Rama. Om Ramaya Namaha Ramaya Rama Bhadraya Ramachandraya Vedase Raghunathaya Nathaya Sita ya Pataye Namaha. Very good. So today I'm going to tell you all about Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna always wore a peacock feather in his hair and loved playing the flute. Look at such a beautiful picture of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna had two sets of parents. One who gave birth to him and their names were Vasudev and Devaki. And the other who took care of him and their names were Nanda Baba and Yashoda. His father, I mean Nanda Baba, was chief of the cowherds. So Krishna grew up amongst them. He was very fond of butter and cream. So he's always, you see, him eating butter and cream. So he had two sets of parents, one who gave birth to him, and their names were Vasudev and Devaki and the one and uh, the other who took care of him and their names were Nanda Baba and Yashoda. Look at all these pretty pictures of Lord Krishna. In all these pictures, he's eating butter. Here he has climbed on a stool to get butter from a pot which was hung on the ceiling. And here he's playing the flute the cows, the peacock, all come to, came to hear him. And here is the peacock feather. Now I'm going to tell you the story of birth of Lord Krishna. Long ago, there lived a king named Ugrasen. He had two children, a son named Kans, and a daughter named Devaki. Devaki was good-natured, but Kans had an 
evil disposition. He was a cruel man, just like Ravana. When he grew up, he dethroned his father and put him in prison, and he himself became the king. Meanwhile, his sister Devaki married King Vasudev. Kans loved Devaki very much. He loved his sister. He even decided to drive Devaki's chariot himself as a gesture of affection. So he's driving the chariot. And here is the bride Devaki and the bridegroom Vasudev. As Kans was driving his sister to her husband's place, a voice came from the skies. And the voice said, Beware, you fool! You love your sister very much and are driving her chariot. However, you will die at the hands of her eighth son. The eighth son of Vasudev and Devaki would kill you. See, that was the voice from the sky. Listening to the voice, Kans was startled. He was afraid and lost his temper. Kans wanted to put Devaki to death to save his own life because he thought that if he would kill Devaki, there will be no children and no one will kill him. So he wanted to kill Devaki. But Vasudev begged Kans to spare his wife and promised that he would hand over every child of theirs to Kans. He said, please, please do not kill my wife. We will give you all our children. Kans agreed, but Devaki and Vasudev and put Devaki and Vasudev behind bars. He put them in jail. He ordered his soldiers to guard the prison cell. Every time Devaki gave birth, Kans killed the child. See, Vasudev with a sad face, he used to bring all his children to Kans. After some time, Devaki and Vasudev's eighth child was born and they named him Krishna. With Krishna's birth, the prison doors suddenly opened. See, all the prison doors are open and the guards fell asleep. All the guards fell asleep. Vasudev took the baby in his arms and escaped from the prison. He didn't want guns to find out. So he escaped from the prison. Placing baby Krishna in a wicker basket, Vasudev left for Gokul. The Yamuna river was flooded due to the pouring rain. It was a dark and stormy night. See the lights and the, you know, the water in the river, it was all flooded. The river was flooded. Vasudev started walking across the river. With every step he took, the waters receded. And the giant serpent named Adhishesha, this is the giant serpent Adhishesha, protected baby Krishna from the rain. See how he's protecting baby Krishna from the rain? And, uh, and Vasudev slowly crossed the Yamuna River. Vasudev reached Nand Baba and Yashoda's house in Gokul. See, after crossing the river, he reached Gokul where Nand Baba and Yashoda lived. And Yashoda has just given birth to a baby girl. He saw that Yashoda had given birth to a baby girl. He picked the baby girl up and placed Krishna in her place. See, he exchanged the babies. Then he returned to the prison with the baby girl. Devaki and Vasudev had hoped that Kans would spare the baby girl because the voice from the sky had mentioned 
that Devaki's eight son would kill Kans. But Kans did not care. He said, doesn't matter. I'm just going to be safe and kill this baby girl. He snatched the baby girl from their hands and tried to kill her. Miraculously, the baby girl transformed into Devi Durga. And she had, you know, 10 hands and each hand she had a weapon. Right? And said to Kansa, informed Kansa, that Devaki's eighth son was alive and would soon kill him. He said, he's still alive and he will kill you. You are an evil person. And here, look at Devaki and Vasudev. They are praying to Devi Durga. So Kans was not able to kill this baby girl. Kans was desperate to kill Krishna. He was looking all over for him. So he called for the fearful demoness Putna. See, this is Putna. See how fearful she lives. He told her to assume the form of a beautiful young woman and kill all the babies that had been born in the previous 10 days because Kans didn't know where Krishna was or where he, where he was born. Putna agreed and entered Krishna's village. This is the Krishna's village. She heard about Yashoda's newborn baby. Putna immediately knew <clears throat> that this child was baby Krishna. She knew. Distracting Yashoda, she made Krishna suck on her poison-smeared nipples. She put poison on her nipples. The poison did nothing to Krishna, but Putna died. And Krishna sucked the life out of Putna. And he, she died. The village that Krishna lived in Gokul was a land of cattle herders. They used to attend the cows. So there was an abundance of milk, curds, and butter in the village. Krishna was very fond of butter and would make use of every opportunity to steal a pot of butter. See, like this, look here, he's also eating butter. All the mothers or gopis, as they were called, started tying pots of butter to the ceiling. See, they started, instead of putting them on the ground, they tied them on the ceiling so that Krishna and his friend, friends would not reach, uh, reach uh, these pots. So that Krishna and his friends would not reach them. But Krishna and his friends were very smart. And let's see how they still were able to eat the pots which were hung high in the ceiling. Krishna would team up with his friends to reach these pots tied up to the ceiling. See, all these pots were tied up to the ceiling and Krishna would team up with his friends. They would climb on each other's shoulders to create a human ladder and steal the butter. See, like this. See, Krishna is on top of this uh, this boy, and that's how he was, you know, getting to the butter. If none of the tricks worked, they would hurl a pebble at the pot and take turns to catch the butter with their open mouths. They would just, you know, throw a stone, and then as the pot broke, and then they will just open their mouth, and all the curd and butter will come to in their mouth. This is how they used to, they ate the butter even when the pots were tied to the ceiling. And look at the monkeys. They are also eating all the butter which fell, butter and cream which fell on the ground. So all the gopis went to Krishna's mom and complained. She said, he broke, he breaks our pot, he eats the butter and he eats the cream. And look at the naughty Krishna, he's looking at them. The gopis complained to Krishna's mother. His mother apologized and then 
to them and promised to discipline Krishna. Yashoda was so fed up of Krishna's antics that one day she tied him to a huge pot. So she tied Krishna to a huge pot. See, look at this huge pot. To free himself, Krishna crawled to the two trees in his courtyard. So there were two trees. So he slowly pulled this pot and he, you know, crawled to the trees. But this pot got stuck in the gap. Krishna pulled the rope with all his strength. The trees came crashing down. See, the trees uprooted and came crashing down. And look at Yashoda is looking. And two devatas appeared. Actually, these trees were not trees. They were two devatas who were cursed to be trees. Krishna had freed them from their curse. So once, when Krishna was playing with his friends, he stuffed a handful of mud into his mouth. One of his friends reported this to his mother. Krishna had eaten dirt. Krishna had eaten dirt. Yashoda took Krishna by the hand, scolded him and asked him to open his mouth. See, Yashoda asked Krishna to open his mouth. Initially, Krishna refused to open his mouth. But when Yashoda gave him a stern look, he opened his mouth. To her surprise, she saw the entire universe in his mouth. She saw all the galaxies, the sun, the moon, or everything in his mouth. Yashoda knew that Krishna was no ordinary child. See, when she saw this whole universe in Krishna's mouth, she knew that Krishna is not an ordinary child. One day, a fruit vendor came to Lord Krishna's house. Krishna has seen his elders exchange grains for the fruits. So he ran inside the house and brought a handful of grains in his little hands. Most of the grains fell when he ran back to the fruit vendor and asked her to give him some fruits. So he said, I will give you grains and you give me fruits. The fruit vendor lovingly filled Claude Krishna's hands with all the fruits she had in her basket in exchange for it few grains. In turn, Lord Krishna filled her basket with jewels and precious stones. See, she filled her basket with these precious stones. So today, I have told you few stories of Lord Krishna. And in the next class, I'm going to tell you more stories of Lord Krishna. And now we are going to learn a prayer to Lord Krishna. See, Lord Krishna is playing the flute, the peacock, the cow. They have all come to listen to him. So let us learn this new prayer. I'm going to go slowly and you chant after me. Oh, Krishna, Namaha. Krishnaya Vasudevaya Devaki Nanda Nayacha Nanda Gopa Kumaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha. Okay, again, chant after me. Oh, Krishnaya Namaha. 
Krishnaya Vasudevaya Deviki Nandanaya Cha Nanda Gopa Kumaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha very good. And now I'm going to tell you the meaning of this verse. So, Om Krishnaya Namaha. This means salutations to Lord Krishna. Krishnaya Vasudevaya Devaki Nanda Nayacha. This means the son of Vasudev, who is Devaki's delight. Nanda Gopakumaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha, who is the son of Nanda Gopala and who is called Govinda. Govinda is another name of Lord. Krishna. So now I'm going to chant this prayer and you just listen to it. Oh Krishnaya Namaha Krishnaya Vasudevaya Devaki Nanda Naya Cha Nanda Gopa Kumaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha. Very good. Okay, so now we will end the chant with these two prayers which you have been learning. So you chant with me. Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha, sarve santu niramaya, sarve bhadrani pashyantu makashchit dukha bhag bhave. Kale varshatu parjanyaha prithivi sasya shalini desho yam shobharahitaha brahmana santu nirbhaya o Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Let there be peace, peace, peace everywhere. So now Rani and Raj give, will give you prasada with Lord Krishna's blessing. And we accept the prasada gracefully. See, Lord Krishna is playing the flute. He has a peacock feather in his hair. So we will meet again. Namaste. Goodbye. Phir milenge. See you later. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.